Now, in order to get a picture of what this looks like, right, I mean, I know roughly what cubics are supposed to do. I know they're going to sort of start down here and end up there, and they're going to wiggle a bit in the middle, but I kind of need to know the features, don't I? Okay? And the important features that I need first are the roots. Now, I know what the, um, uh, the x-intercepts, I know what the y-intercept is, it's just 6, right? that's an easy bit to get, but the x-intercepts are harder, I need some kind of factorization. Okay? So, how do I factorize this thing? I need to take advantage of this factor theorem here and plug in values until I get zero, right? Now, when you get given questions like this, because we know like you're limited to like a hand calculator and your brain, you will get one where the first factor that you can find should be relatively small, okay? The first number I always try is one, right? So I'm gonna test p of one. In fact, this is exactly the way I write it, okay? I say test, because I'm trying to find something. Like, I don't know what the answer will be. So, I say P of 1. Now, 1's the, one of the first values I try because it's easy, right? I'm going to get 1 take away 4 plus 1 plus 6. Okay? Now, remember what I'm trying to find is 0, right? I don't actually care what the actual value is if it's not 0. 0 is what I want. That'll give me a factor. Now, I don't need to do any more operations than that to know. That's not zero. Can you see that? Like, things aren't going to balance out. Okay. So all I say is, it's not zero. Like I don't actually need to know what the value is. I just need to know if it's zero or not. Okay. I've tested one. You have two choices for me. You can keep on going up. You can test one, two, three. Those are pretty common values to test. Right. So I'm going to test p of two. Okay. And again, this is a bit harder, but it's not impossible. I'm going to get. Uh, let's see. Eight take away. 4 times 4, which is 16, plus 2, plus 6. Does that look like it's going to be 0? zero? Yes. Does it work? Yes. So what I've got here is 0. So I found a factor. That's excellent, right? If P of 2 is 0, right? therefore, X minus 2 is a factor. And I think it's really important to state that, right? Like it shows why you've been sort of randomly doing things. It's so that you get a number out here, okay? Or rather a factor out there. So what do I do with this now? I can divide now, right? I, I don't want to randomly, synthetically, all along divide this by anything. I want to do something where I know I'm going to get a remainder zero. So now I can begin, right? Two is the zero of this. In fact, it's just the number that I stuck in here before. And then I want my coefficients, which are, read them out for me. One, three, four, one, six. Okay. What's the first step in synthetic? You just write down the leading coefficient. And then here comes our iterating step, right? Multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So, multiply, add. Multi Wait, did I do it right? Did I do it right? Yeah. I think so. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I did. I did. I'm second guessing myself. Uh, multiply and then add and then multiply and then add. You okay with that? There's that remainder zero that I was so desperately hoping for. Okay. So, therefore, my answer here is going to be x squared minus 2x minus 3. Yeah? So, the reason why I've got this now is I can do a division transformation statement. I can say um, p of x, or y, really, is going to be uh, the divisor times the quotient. And I don't have a remainder. I mean, I do have a remainder, but it's zero. Okay. And what's great about this is I've transformed a hard problem, gross, factorize a cubic, into an easy problem. Factorize a quadratic. That's really easy to do. You can tell me the pair of numbers right now, can't you? Minus 3 and 1. Does that work? Yeah, yeah. Now you can see, by the way, had we tried, instead of doing p of 2, had I tried p of negative 1, that should also have given me a remainder of 0, right? So then the fact you would try first is x plus 1, and it would work out just the same. Okay? Now you know this. I'm not going to labor the point. You can graph this very, very simply. Okay? Um, having factorized it, now I know what are all of those numbers. What are the significance of those? Yeah, those will give me the roots, right? I've got roots at negative 1, 2, and 3. Yeah? yeah? Negative 1, 2, and 3. Okay? So now I just need to draw a cubic that's going to pass through negative 1, 2, and 3. So it looks to me something like this. Plus, it's a positive. Like that? Is that okay? That's plus 6. And I know where the intercept is because it's just that guy. OK? 
okay? So you see this process, really, it just makes mincemeat of questions like this. It's so simple to go through and it's very efficient as well, okay? In Quadrupios, we don't need to worry about um, Now, okay, if you, if you were doing a question like this, right, I could ask a logical next step, which is, okay, knowing this, I can differentiate off the first derivative, I can find those turning points. Now that you know calculus, that is a very, like, that's a good next question that I would ask. But if all I was asked to do was just grab it, just full stop, that's it. Um, the roots were the important feature, right? And I need to go through, I'm emphasizing this process so you can get those exactly right. Does that make sense? Uh, but that was a good question. I mean, I could easily ask a part B and say, differentiate, find the stationary points, and then plot them onto your graph. That would be a fairly common question to get. 